imagine your woman or future wife having intimacy with another man. Now try to get aroused to that and find it attractive. It's disgusting, isn't it? No man in their right mind would be okay with something like that. As a matter of fact, you should be angry just thinking about that. What's even worse is watching haram is slowly turning into a cuck. And we know that watching pee is haram because it's in of the hand. But did you know that watching it will bring you closer to becoming the type of man that will never enter Jannah? I'll explain why here. This is going to be one of the most important videos that I have ever dropped on this channel. So make sure to pay attention to this one, especially because in this video, I'm going to drop my ultimate nofap strategy as well. As always, timestamps are in the description box down below, but you're, you're going to want to watch this segment by segment. So to get into this, what is the problem with pee and how does it work? Aside from being haram, watching pee turns you into a cuck, which is a man that gets off to other men smashing his wife. In the Arabi, this term is called a dayuth. A dayuth is a man that has no protectiveness over his women folk and doesn't mind being a cuck. Matter of fact, gets off to that. The Prophet wasallam mentioned that there will be three types of people that Allah will prevent from entering Jannah and one of them is a dayuth. Now, I did drop a video very recently about dayuth men and this rise of men that are okay showing their wives off, which you can watch after this video. And when you watch P, you're not actually being intimate with a woman. You're getting off to another man being with a woman and slowly conditioning yourself to find that arousing. Now, what's worse is instead of just merely being a bystander watching that, simply put everything that he does to her in the video, you are vicariously living through him. Sub him in, coach. Now, combine that with how many videos the average man watches to find the perfect skin tone, the perfect girl, the perfect face, the perfect hair that he's feeling that day, the perfect body type. Which means you've pedestalized this woman to the max in your mind after all these hundreds of videos, only to then sub in another guy to take her instead. Now, we live in a day and age where we all know in a span of a few seconds, you can have your selection to access visually multiple women, as many women as you want. Now, obviously, if you're struggling with a pee addiction, keep watching this because I'm going to mention my nofap strategy at the end of the video. But anyway, let that sink in. I'm talking hundreds thousands of years ago emperors and conquerors obviously the highest value men in society not in a, a deen sense but in a dunya sense bro i'm talking the average conqueror and emperor the amount of women that he had in his life hundreds of women thousands of women right that still isn't as much as the average eight-year-old today can watch on his phone it's disgusting wallah now, of course we know this doesn't make them a high value man because Adultery and fornication is still zina. You're still a low value man at the end of the day. Spare change. Spare change, ma'am. But there's so many Muslims today that unfortunately think that zina of the hand is still better than zina involving other people. I'm not going to say it's worse, but why do zina of the hand to begin with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that on the day of judgment, our own skin will testify against us. That's a scary thought. Imagine your hands, your ears, your eyes testifying against the atrocities and transgressions that you've made them commit with your own free will. Now, this dayuth behavior that you're basically priming your brain to have will have disastrous implications in your marriage. You'll have no ghayra, you will have no protectiveness over your women, you will be okay because you're slowly getting off to desensitizing yourself to allowing your women to be taken by other men. So why would you prevent her then from being around other men, free mixing, going outside, all dressed up and dolled up and haram, perfume, you name it. You'll be okay with it. Matter of fact, you'll promote it. We must understand that the ultimate goal in our life is Jannah. And this dunya is just a test to prime us to get there, inshallah. But to prevent ourselves from racking up sins, we have to get married. Now, I understand there's going to be people in the comments mentioning not everyone is destined for marriage. It's not decreed for everyone. Yada, yada, yada. But how will you know unless you actually try? And if you're already not on self-improvement currently, what are you doing? That's the whole point behind my channel because I'm on a mission to level up men all around the world in every aspect of their deen, their fitness, their mental health, and their finances. And if you want to accelerate that and speed it up much faster, hit me up at 5 fitcom inshallah. Given that Ramadan is right around the corner, it's a perfect time to start right now. Now, going back to being on the path to marriage, it's going to be pretty difficult to lower your gaze today, given the fitna that we have. This is where NoFap comes in. NoFap is a men's movement where you basically abstain from zina of the hand, watching haram, and just touching yourself. And this is extremely difficult because the average man, might I add even the average male today, simply thinks that it's not an addiction and I can stop whenever I want and I'm actually okay. If you think you're not addicted yet you recreationally watch a few times a week or even a few times a month, you're addicted, my guy. Stop it. Get some help. Now the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to the Shabab that young men 
essentially to get married if you have the ability to get married if you don't then fast for fasting diminishes sexual power this directly proves two things number one one of the motives of marriage is to help us lower our gaze and fulfill our desires, thereby reducing our desires when we're out in public. Because it's proven in this hadith that if you can't get married, then do X, Y, Z to prevent your desires from overpowering you. And number two, this hadith proves that fasting does diminish your sexual powers and help you control your desires and urges. Now, this isn't my nofap strategy. I'm saying right now you should be doing this. You should be fasting Mondays and Thursdays as according to the sunnah or even every other day fast of Daud, or even every day simply just to like really help you control your desires. And if you still can't, here is my ultimate nofap strategy. To never relapse on nofap ever again, inshallah, you simply have to get off nofap. Yes, you heard me right. Forget nofap and move on once and for all. We all know those YouTubers that are making videos like day 99 of nofap and the next day you see a video saying I relapsed. This simply means you have to forget about nofap completely. Otherwise, every single waking moment of the day becomes a moment of resistance to an urge that you're consciously fighting. When you attribute so much mental energy to something like nofap, every second becomes abstinence, resistance, fighting, and you constantly feel deprived from something. Simply forget that you're even on nofap. Stop worrying about it and just replace your life with other meaningful things. This will, number one, boost you towards achieving your goals as a Muslim man. And number two, although you might relapse a little bit here and there in the short term because you're thinking, you know what, I'm not even on nofap, so why does it matter? In the long term, you'll actually be so busy replacing nofap with all these things that you won't even relapse and you're actually going to get closer to being married inshallah. I'm not telling you to go relapse, but what I'm saying is if you forget about nofap and you relapse once or twice in the beginning and then you eventually quit very soon inshallah by the power of Allah, it's better than you being in this state of relapse, sin, tawbah, relapse, sin, tawbah, and then you actually never learn and matter of fact, you get worse. Now, inshallah, you can recalibrate your fitrah and then come closer to being a masculine man and having your ghayra back. Now, as Muslim men, we are the standard of what non-Muslims will judge Islam by today in the modern world. How can we sin day and night and expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of a person until they change what's within themselves. Now, a quick note is one of my best friend's grandmother passed away recently, Allah yirhamah, may Allah grant her jannah. She was a revert from Brazil to Islam. And many years of being a Muslim, alhamdulillah, a lot of Muslims through her kids and grandkids and all that. Allahumma barik, may Allah bless her. And she passed away in her 70s. Please keep her in your du'as. Make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all her sins and grants her the highest level of paradise with ease. Allahumma ameen. If you made it this far, smash that like button, comment down below, send this to your average Abdullah friend. And find me at fightfit.com, inshallah, to accelerate your self-improvement goals and make progress that would normally take a span of a few years in a matter of months, if not even sooner, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.